Welcome back to the Meeple Marathon. Today we're going to be learning how to play through a city phase in Tenaris Adventures. So city phases happen in between each quest uh, within Tenaris Adventures, except for at the end of a week, instead of a city phase, you do a world phase. So we'll cover that in a different video. But this allows you to um, basically upgrade your characters in numerous ways. So to set up the city phase you're going to get out your poster here and you're going to take we're still in week one so i took my uh deck of week one npc cards that had not been unlocked yet i shuffled them up and i dealt out four these are the only four i have options to conquer uh this day or whatever this phase um but if technically, if you conquer four each time, you could bring all of them into your deck. But I would say if you definitely see some that you really, really want, especially the quest power that you really want, go after them because you may not see them again. Um, I'm not super concerned about any of these guys out here. So I don't know how hard I'm going to go after any of them. You're also going to take whatever level of building you're at. So you can see my natural lab and my tavern are at level two, and my weapon shop and iron hand outpost are at level one. What I've been doing is as soon as I uh, upgrade to level two, I've been putting my level one buildings, uh, same place I put my adventure cards that are no longer needed uh, in a certain portion of the box. I don't think that these can be reduced. I could be wrong. Maybe they can, but I know where to find them. So. Um, you're also going to take the loot cards that you earned at the end of the quest. So I earned these loot cards at the end of the quest, basically. I've divided them up in a specific way here. I'll tell you about that in a minute. You're also going to need some of the mana cubes. It doesn't matter what type. I just have my little bowl here. And then your pile of shuffled up loot cards. Last but not least, the, this is your character deck. So do not confuse this with the week one NPC deck. This is your character deck that includes your initial NPCs, any NPCs that you have conquered up to this point, and your hero cards. So remember your hero cards look exactly the same on the back. They have the passive abilities here. They have their name, and then they have these stats at the bottom, which you do not use during a quest. These stats at the bottom are solely used during the city phase. So. You're going to shuffle up this deck and you're going to deal four hands of four cards each, which you can see here that I have done. Um, even if you're playing solo, even if you're playing with only, say, one hero and four or three comrades, you're still going to deal out four cards. Otherwise, you would never be able to get anywhere in the city phase. So that's the setup. Now we need to utilize these four hands of cards. The trick is, is that each hand has to kind of be spent on its own and in its entirety before you move on to the next. Now, there are some people here um, that can, they have this little lightning symbol. And this little lightning symbol means that they can play out of turn on someone else's turn, on any turn. But if you use them, you can see this is three handshake or whatever, or uh, instantly to handshake for someone else. So you would give them up being able to play them on your turn. So let's um, let's start with these. I always like to look through and see which ones don't have any instant powers. And I try and use those first. Now, I kind of have a strategy going in here as to what I want to do in this city phase. And the biggest thing is upgrading my weapon shop and my iron hand outpost. That's going to allow my shooter and my bruiser to be using level one attack cards um, within their role. I already have those for my commander and my tactician. Um, also, I'm going to focus more on expeditions up here because I want more loot cards to hopefully be able to either increase, uh, get some more weapons, or uh, here at the tavern, you can see that this is one of the coolest features of the game in my opinion. I can spend two cubes that I have dedicated to the tavern once it gets to that phase and spend a gold and a ruby. If I do, I draw three heroes, not NPCs, but three heroes from the character deck. This means that I am drawing from the pool of heroes that I have not chosen, so not my four that I've already got in the quest. They're added to my character deck, and then in the future, I can use them as long as I am keeping, you know, covering basically the four four out of the eight rolls and not overlapping 
So you can actually play with additional characters outside of the four you initially started with. You are not trapped into the first four heroes that you started the campaign with throughout the entire campaign. As long as you have at least one healer or commander, as long as you have at least one tactician or controller, um, so on and so forth. So really love this aspect of the game. It allows you to diversify and check out other people because what they're, what you're leveling up with the buildings is the roll and the roll cards are what upgrade. The characters' special attacks are always there and their you know, kind of basic primary attacks that are specific to them are always an option, but they may not be as good, so you may move away from them. But I just think it's really nice that you could technically have, you know, tons of heroes to choose from at the beginning of each quest near the end of this campaign. So I want to, yeah, put some here enough on the tavern to at least be able to do that upgrade these two and then I have an upgraded thing so maybe an upgraded sword or something like that and maybe even upgraded armor for like my bruiser so that's kind of where I'm going to be focusing putting my cubes the natural lab always comes in handy though because it allows me to kind of transmute my resources now you can see I've set aside my resources here in attempts to kind of save them for upgrading these two buildings I have one piece of wood left over and that's not a gold or a gem but it could be it could help me get like my weapon but we're gonna go up here doing these two guys is going to allow us to get more loot cards so I zoomed in here just to give you guys a, a better explanation of how you go about spending the cards in your character deck to say complete expeditions or conquer NPCs. The same goes for the um, locations just down below us here, right here, um, getting putting cubes down here. So every character, every hero has their stats along here on the bottom. And then NPCs have them over here. Some also have uh, you know, a stat here and then an ore with a lightning symbol. So essentially what you're going to do is commit a card or more to either an expedition or conquering an NPC or putting cubes down here into your buildings. And you, you simply, a hero, you can use all of these stats here, but you still can only say commit her to this mission. So she's got four weapon and five weapon and four eyes. So she could by herself put one cube on this, but say we came along and found, uh, well, I don't have anybody here. Say we, we added this guy in here who's gonna give her three. Those two together are putting two on here. Or um, she and say this gentleman here with a total of seven vision could conquer this NPC. She would come off the board then at that point and go into our uh, discard pile, essentially. <clears throat> um, or, for example, this person could just simply spend his three to put a single cube down here. Down here is the only place that you can send uh, multiple people to uh, at any given point in time. Um, but basically, you're just taking one card and you're committing it to one area. You cannot, for example, split up and put her five towards, say, this guy and her four vision towards, say, this expedition. So let's move forward with these guys. So you can see here my shooter has you know decent amount of stats and then these guys who are just my initials basically you know just have three of one individual thing. So what I am looking at here is going on the Ahemoth expedition here with this dwarf looking fellow. And if I can get six uh, weapon and three vision, I can actually put two cubes down on him. So, I can do that with these two cards. This equals eight, and she alone has four. So all the excess is just kind of gone, which is fine. But I basically have spent those two guys. I'm gonna take two cubes. It does not matter what color they are. You just need to be able to track it throughout the game here, and we're good to go. My last two people here uh, have, remember I have to spend, I have to use up this hand before I move on to anybody else. So three vision and three uh, teamwork or whatever you want to call it. So I'm just going to come down here and make sure that I have 
um, the necessary stuff to hopefully uh, put get a, a new hero into my deck. So I spent this guy three vision, got me one cube. This guy uh, or girl here spent me three teamwork, got me one cube. So they're spent. Let's look around here and see what else. He's got a decent number of lightning abilities. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I am gonna come back over here. So I did kind of look through these beforehand, so I wasn't analysis paralysis keeping you guys here forever. So these two uh, ladies here, I, I got really lucky. I got all of my personal heroes out this time um, she is um, they are giving me where was I gonna go oh she's giving me six all by herself and she's giving me three books all by herself so I can take on the Thasian fields put two cubes in there with just them now you could spend three cards you could spend four cards whatever you need to do um, but once you've kind of attempted say this expedition I can't come back and do a three and two and put a third one out or you know, I couldn't do three books and two teamwork here once and then come back and do it again. That, uh, that is not, not the name of the game here. So, all right, so this guy's giving me three weapon and three vision, um, which is not super helpful. Um, she's giving me four teamwork. So between the two of these guys, we could send them to Turtle Point Peninsula. And I think that's what we're going to do because I'd have eight weapons and four teamwork. Yeah. And so these two guys we're going to dedicate right here. So that's not bad. Um, I have covered a good portion of the expeditions. For every cube I have out here, I get to draw an additional loot card. And um, for every three, I get a bonus loot card. So this is um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight loot cards. It's pretty good. So now I'm gonna focus down here. So this should be pretty easy here. Um, let's see, here's two sets of three uh, teamworks. So they are gonna go, yeah, we're just gonna put them right here so we can transmute some resources if we need to. Then this guy's giving me three uh, weapons and this guy's giving me three books. So I'm gonna put one on each of those. So boom and boom. And then last but not least, we're gonna come down here and, hmm, okay. So this one guy here, who's one of the ones, he's a, a character I actually got via a quest, not necessarily in the city phase, because you can see he's a week two. That's how I'm able to have him. Um, I can search the character deck for a hero card and put it into your hand then shuffle the deck But I've actually already gotten all my heroes out. So I'm just going to use him for his three um, Three attack here, so I'm going to put that one here that way I know that I can now upgrade this building and open up two uh, melee weapons and over here I know I can upgrade uh, this and maybe I want to call my deck, so maybe I want to look into getting two or one. So let's see what we got here. Um, there's four and there's three, so there's two more, and I'll just then decide what I want to do down the road. And then last but not least is this three vision one. Um, oh yeah, and I can put it right here. So yep, that's what we're going to do. All right, so we have spent all four hands worth of character cards. We're basically done with these. I chose to ignore the NPCs because I really like my NPCs currently, and I would have had to conquer three of them to just gain one additional loot card. Right now, it's just going after cubes down here and loot cards up there, which I accomplished. So like I already pointed out, this is one loot card per cube, which is six, plus for every three, it's an additional one. So Six divided by three is two, so eight total loot cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, the loot cards that you gain uh, at the end of a quest or during the C phase is a use it or lose it. So I can't stockpile this loot uh, in any way, shape, or form. So 
let's see did we get a gem we did all right so I, I can upgrade this one did we get a what did we need another iron we did so I can upgrade this one and then the rest of this stuff I need one and one so I have that so I can do my two hero cards the rest of this I am gonna keep to um, hopefully spend on weapons I can transmute it if I need to so that's what we're gonna do so let's go ahead and I always like to upgrade buildings first because it may make things like these superpowers better for example you know the first time I upgraded this natural lab I almost went in and spent one cube to change two loot cards but then I realized if I upgraded to natural lab first I could get an extra loot card exchange so I'm gonna go ahead and basically just upgrade these two buildings spending all this loot over there and this one they each required one cube so I'll come back over here and these should be right no nope. so there's my weapon shop too and my iron hand outpost too so to my knowledge I can just tuck these away in a box somewhere it, what's really nice is on the back it just gives you once you start a journey phase it tells you exactly like what type of hand you can create for your particular characters um, what you need to gather so these are really helpful to when you move from city phase into journey phase just flip these over and keep them they help you they help you set up everything all right so we're done with that there we go um, all right so spending two now allows me to remove three cards from my character deck um, so bonus all right what did we want to do here I want to uh, go ahead and um, well let's let's open up some stuff first so I'm gonna spend one cube here to open up two weapons and since I upgraded the weapon shop they can now be level one weapons if I hadn't they would have been level zero weapons which are starters and nobody wants that so I have my stack of level one weapons here these are melee weapons which is what the weapon shop gets me let me make sure I have them all and so you take all of them you're gonna give them a shuffle and this is not gaining them this is just opening them up for sale making that putting them up on the shelf essentially so I'm gonna draw two because it's two open up two weapons the other ones go away and so now I have an eagle sword and twin blades now level one armor I mean level one weapons are always going to give you plus one roll level two weapons are always going to give you plus two to your roll and they're always there so even when you flip them over that plus one is there so all we're really looking at is um, this is plus eight damage so pretty easy or this one allows me to move six and make a basic attack I think I like this one but let's see this one costs me an iron and two gold and this one's two iron and a gold so let's see what we got here um, sometimes it's nice to be able to move but then a basic attack you have to roll for so you could miss this one's just straight eight damage um, and I have this and I have this so but I'm saving those so I would need to transmute um, two of my resources here so what I'm going to do is just kind of put these up over here I don't have to purchase them yet um, I'm going to spend one cube here to open up two level one uh, armors so where did my stack of stuff go so there's cloaks which the lighter characters wear and then there's armor so you want to make sure you grab the right set of cards this should be all armor all level one and this is giving me they all give me plus five hit points no matter what so my HP is increased and that's initial and permanent or whatever all right so we've got now this is offering me tiger's heart flip you flip and attack uh, choose immunity to the attacks passive power or its effects I might have to look and see what that one means deal six damage to the two closest enemies I like this one so unfortunately though I don't think I'm gonna have enough 
resources to uh, do anything about this. So let's see, I could spend these two cubes to give me an iron. And I may do that instead of removing my characters from the deck. That would give me the two iron, two out of the three iron that I need. Um, and then I would need, but I'm still short. So, hmm. This would give me wood. This, I know I want to do that. This one's out of stuff. So, hmm. Okay. So I'm going to spend this to, let's just see if we can figure this out. Do this math. Uh, I'm going to take an iron back. So there we go. So now I have two iron. I will spend one here to transmute three resources. So I know that I want this one to be a gold. And I want, gosh, uh, this one to be, let's say, another gold. And we'll just say this one to be my third gold I need. Okay, so there's my three. Oh, I can do it because I put two cubes here. So I can spend this one now. I only need to transmute one resource. I've got what I need over here. Um, so this is, I can transmute into the iron that I need. And there we go. So Natural Lab comes in super, super handy. Um, I could have done all that with a level one Natural Lab, but um, that just works. So now I can spend all of these resources to take this guy and this guy. I could have made it work for the Twin Blades, but I like just having that dedicated eight uh, attack. So these now, go back into the, or they will at the end of the city phase. They go back into their piles. Um, now, you, for example, you see I could spend two cubes here at the weapon shop to take any one of my, say, level one armors and exchange it for something else. So if I decide my eagle sword just really isn't as good as the twin blades, I could come back here to the weapon shop during another city phase and exchange it. All right, so this has been spent. And then last but not least, uh, I will spend my two cubes here, my gold and my gem, to draw three hero cards and add one to the deck.
So I would like to point out, this is a pretty decent stack of cards here. I'd like to point out that even if you don't have every single piece of content for um, Arena of the Contest or Tenaris Adventures, for example, I do not have the legendary box. I chose to go in on the, you know, in the Tenaris campaign, got Tenaris Adventures, which came with the Madness box, I believe, and then just got base Arena because um, I wanted to check it out first. So there are some cards in here from, say, example, the Legendary Box, because with Tenaris Adventures, they created these cards for everybody. If you have this card, though, you should have their special attacks uh, cards as well, and you have their roll cards if you have Tenaris Adventures, which you should because you're playing the city base. So uh, if you happen to choose a hero that you don't necessarily have the miniature for, which is the only thing you would probably be missing at this point, just use a proxy miniature. Use any other miniature uh, or go buy you a Bones miniature at your friendly local game store. You don't have to... Um, so again, look at this awesomely huge deck of cards here. So I'm going to draw three. One, two, three. And we're going to pick somebody to add to our party. So I have uh, the tank here. Circle of protection, another tactician, or a controller. Hmm. I do wonder. I really like Anarial, my bruiser, so I would have to trade her out for him. Uh, enemy starts its turn in one of you and declares an attack. Uh, you are shielded four. If an ally is attacked, heal four an ally. What does she do? The controller. Target is in four of you. First hit of your turn, heal an ally five. That's pretty good, actually. So I think we're going to go with the Fallen Angel here. Um, I do like the idea of having a big burly tank, but I really like this kind of almost constant heal. We got very close to losing some characters. I had to use some chests uh, last time. So we are going to add now uh, Zafara to our character deck. These two guys are going to get shuffled back into my larger hero deck here. I'm going to keep all of them separate. So it is a little fiddly keeping all these various decks separate, but now at the uh, this, the city phase is essentially done. So at this point I could clean everything up, put it all away, but if I wanted to move into a journey phase, I would choose one of my adventures. Here I have G or F to choose from. I would go through the journal, uh, which would lead me to one of the quests. And then as I prepare for my quest, what I would do here is go through and find all of my heroes. And I would find all of my NPCs that have a quest power. So I have four really good NPCs that have a quest power, which is why I wasn't too concerned with these guys' quest power. Um, so here's one, two, and there. So then I would choose four heroes out of my five optional here. Basically, I have to take a shooter, I have to take a commander, um, I have to take a bruiser, and uh, I could switch out my controller for my tactician. So I could take either one of these. Once I've chosen them, I can then assign each one an NPC, which is gonna give them a little quest power. You only need these cards at the beginning. And bam, you now have, you know, upgraded attack cards, flip these over. So it tells you what to pick and pack, but um, really love the city phase and what it adds to the game. This is honestly my favorite part of Tenaris Adventures is the city phase. So hopefully this video was helpful walking you through everything step by step. If you have any questions, please feel free to let me know in the comment section below. Um, and if not, if you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. Uh, once again, thanks for watching. Have a great day.